you're gonna learn how to turn short-term clients into long-term clients. As I've suggested in other modules, you wanna create a baseline of hourly clients that are long-term to establish consistent cash flow for your business and stabilize your business. And so I mentioned how sometimes I do shorter projects and it's just a one-off one project for a client, but then sometimes that short-term client becomes a long-term client. And there's only a couple of simple things you need to do to succeed at this. So the first most obvious way to increase your chances in a short-term client becoming a long-term client is to deliver above and beyond what is expected in the shorter project so that they'll wanna work with you again. So maybe they had a certain expectation for how good of a job you're gonna do and you want to go above and beyond that and exceed their expectations for the project, for the quality of work that you do, but also your communication skills, your time management skills is a huge aspect of them wanting to work with you again, which is basically the second thing you need to do is to be a great communicator, always keep them in the loop throughout the whole project and be really, really good with your time. Be really, really good with, with projecting timelines, with getting things done before the deadlines you gave them. You know, if you say it's gonna be done on Friday, deliver it to them on Thursday. Continue to surprise them throughout the entire process of that shorter project with your communication skills and your time management skills and the quality of your work and your chances and them wanting to work with you long-term will be much, much higher. Now, the biggest way that I've been able to keep clients around for a while and, and have those long-term clients wanna work with me for a long time is I'm constantly looking for ways that I can upgrade my services to meet my clients' new needs. So often I've worked with a client on one thing and then I noticed that they had a need that was new, but nobody else on their team could fulfill that need. And I, there was a chance that I'd be the best candidate to fulfill that need. So I offered to take on that responsibility for them. And sometimes it was things that I had to do a, quick, a, a bit of quick research to really figure out how to do, uh, but it was still within my realm of, of, of expertise. So for example, for myself, I do video marketing and there's so many different aspects of what I could focus on within video marketing for a client. And so it's up to me to keep figuring out how to pivot to different activities based on what that client needs most. So maybe I start working with a client on their YouTube channel, but then a couple weeks in, we find that they have a greater need with optimizing video on their website. So I offer doing that for them and I shift my activities to meet their most immediate needs. Or maybe their email marketing could, could, could improve and how they use video in emails. So now I'm gonna be like, hey, I'm gonna offer, I'm gonna offer doing this for you, and now let's shift focus on this because I think this is gonna be the most important thing we can focus on now within video marketing to achieve your, your business goals. And so I'm constantly looking for what's changing in my client's business and where there are gaps and where there are holes and what needs I could fulfill so that I continually remain relevant. And so keep finding ways of expanding your skill set and expanding your knowledge within your industry so that you'll always remain relevant to your client whenever their needs shift. And an important part of this is that you have to stay on top of what's working in your industry and what's, you know, either what's trending or what's working uh, so that you can detect and look ahead so that you can predict when something might stop working maybe six months from now so that right now you can start gaining a new skill and you can start gaining some new knowledge so when it comes time to stop doing the one thing you've been doing for them, you're ready to shift into the other thing and you can keep them as a client. So you need to constantly be learning and upgrading your skills and researching to make sure the services you're offering are still relevant to what businesses are currently needing and what they're wanting to pay for. Yeah, because if you gained a skill back in 1980 for some huge computer that they used to have back then, and you knew how to work that computer, but then you didn't keep up on learning how to work with the newer computers in the 90s, and then in the 2000s, you didn't keep up with how to work with uh, the internet and, and, and newer versions of computers, then your, your initial skill that you had in the 80s would be totally irrelevant, right? Like you have to continually learn and grow in order to remain relevant. And this is just a rule for any business. Um, this isn't just for freelancers and solopreneurs. This is for if every single business that stays in business decade after decade 
they only stay in business because they're constantly pivoting what products they're creating and what services they're focusing on based on the changing world, based on people's changing needs and what's relevant. And they're also, and they're also pivoting based on how technology is changing. Because technology changes so fast, that forces us to keep gaining new skills and keep learning how to use different technology. And so you can never ever rely on one skill that you learned 10 years ago to keep you in business the rest of your life because you'll have to keep gaining new skills and keep learning. And so you get to be a student the rest of your life. If you wanna stay in business the rest of your life, you have to remain a student the rest of your life and constantly be learning new things so you can stay relevant. And overall, what this does is that when you're constantly offering new ways of helping your client that you feel will be better than what you initially were working on them with, they see you as a real expert, for one, in your industry because you're staying on top of your industry and what's working and not working, and you're getting to them before they get to you. In other words, you want, you want to be the one to suggest to them that now we shift focus to this before they suggest that to you because that way they always see you as the expert in, in that industry. And so you wanna make sure that you're on top of that. Two, they see that you, re, re, you, that you really care about their business. Because if you keep offering new ways of helping them that you feel will, will better grow their business and better solve their problem, then they see you as somebody who really cares, that really gets their business, but also really cares to actually grow their business. Which means they're then willing to pay you more, right? Because they see you as a true business consultant, that you're not just a website designer, you are a business consultant website designer and you're here to help them grow their business. Because yeah, if something's no longer relevant that you've been working on them with, um, if you don't have an alternative, then they're just gonna end the relationship with, with you and now you just lost them as a client. I had uh, one client who paid me to set up a digital downloadable course on their website using a tool that I've never used before and I understood the mechanics of kind of how it worked overall, but I did not, I did not know how it would work uh, with that specific tool. So I had to study. I had to study up on how to do it, and I told them I could do it because I knew that I'd be able to, uh, and they trusted my confidence, and I ended up doing it really well. But I learned a new skill just for that one client and something that they needed. And so don't be afraid to, to tell clients that you can do certain things that you actually haven't done yet because of your confidence and your ability to quickly learn how to do it. And, you know, it puts the pressure on, but it's a good healthy amount of pressure. Um, but yeah, don't be afraid to try new things that you haven't tried before because a client has a specific need and they have nobody else to do it. Um, and so overall, just get really good at researching. If you're an expert researcher and you're an expert problem solver, You'll always have long-term clients. You'll always stay in business. Your business will keep growing. Because if you don't know how to do something, you'll be able to research it very quickly. And you'll be able to solve the problem very quickly and figure out how to do it very quickly. And businesses and clients, they're willing to pay somebody who's very good at doing that. They're willing to pay somebody who's a very good problem solver that even if they don't know how to do it initially, they'll figure it out very quickly. And I've had that happen so many times where clients paid me to solve a problem I never solved before, but they trusted in my ability to problem solve. So they paid me to figure it out. Businesses need great problem solvers so that they can continue to grow. And so tell yourself that you are a great problem solver, focus on becoming a better problem solver, and just constantly look for ways that you can solve new problems for your clients and you will always stay relevant. So in summary, keep learning, Keep on top of your industry and what's currently in demand. Keep gaining new skills and you'll be able to remain relevant for a client for a very long time, even as their needs shift. Hopefully this is helpful to you so that now you know how to turn a short-term client into a long-term client.